You guys remember five, 10 years ago where everybody was talking big data, big data. It was like big data was the big fancy word of the day, big data, big data. What we found out then was that um, the more data you pour into an algorithm, you only get incremental at a certain point. It's like the um, um, point of diminishing returns. It only gets, in, your, your solution only gets incrementally better. Doesn't matter how much more data you pour into an algorithm. It's not going to uh, have a smarter uh, 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 insight or a smarter solution. What we figured out was that um, if we uh, uh, grew exponentially, doubled, tripled, quadrupled the size of compute, that your answers had a linear correlation. Your insights from that model, from that algorithm, had a linear correlation to the size of the compute, meaning if you double the compute, you were twice as likely to have a more accurate prediction. If you quadruple the compute, four X times the accuracy of your predictions. And so hence the AI wars, right? So now you saw everyone, hence why Nvidia's um, stock skyrocketed because they were like, yeah. we've got to buy up everything because everybody knew the more compute we put so this, this, this theorem was that the more compute we put, the more accurate our stuff will be. And so what you're going to see, so that's the name of the game, right, is scale. And so what you're going to see is more accurate solutions, more accurate capability beyond chat GPT. Chat GPT is one sliver of the AI story. That's a chat bot. It's a, some people refer to it as a stochastic parrot. Um, it's one capability. There's tons of capabilities. Uh, researchers in um, <sighs> Netherlands um, uh, uh, for the first time raced, uh, raced drones up upwards of accelerations of 5G for the first time. An all AI drone won, mm. um, won that race, right? And so that is uh, the, the result of accelerated compute and supercompute power being brought to these models. So it's essentially, Rashad, um, it, it's sky's the limit um, right now. The, 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 the prevailing wisdom is the more compute you bring to the table, the smarter whatever it is you're trying to do uh, will be. Yeah, and that could become something dangerous, right? The smarter it becomes, the less we have over control of it. So you brought up the term AI wars. So <laughs> let's talk about the AI wars. Yeah. You, you see these companies, you brought up OpenAI, you know, they've partnered with Microsoft. We've seen Am Amazon and Anthropic. We see NVIDIA working with all of them. We saw Foxconn. What, where are we with the AI wars? Obviously, there's a geopolitical undertone to it, right? As we see uh, NVIDIA being capped of what they can sell to China, China putting bans on certain American companies. What, where are we at? What are the solutions? Are more foundries, which are where chips are being created uh, the solution in America? What, what, what are you taking on the landscape? Yeah, that, that's such a big question, Troy, and it's got to be, and it's got to be tackled. And um, so a couple of things, uh, really in a cheeky fashion, I'll say, you want to think about this the way you think about, and I'm a, I'm a, I used to, my way back in the day when I was in grad school, I used to have a Hotmail that was an uh, undercover nerd at Hotmail.com. So I'm an undercover nerd, so I love me some Star Wars. So what I will tell you is you want to think about it the way you think about um, uh, uh, the Sith. Um, they come in pairs, right? So you always have the, the master and then you have the, the trainee, if you will, or whatever, right? So the way you want to think about this is Microsoft paired up with OpenAI. Um, that part of that partnership is we will provide you the compute and the infrastructure for you to do your magic. Right mm -hmm. now, now look at Anthropic, who's Anthropic's partner, Amazon. Right. So they said up to four billion dollars. They didn't say four billion dollars in cash. It was like up to four billion dollars of I, they kept it really nebulous, meaning that they're going to make sure that they have access to their compute because Amazon is now investing um, in building their own GPUs and Forensium and Tranium, which are relatively um, uh, um, unauthentic, uh, inauthentic uh, titles for their um, com uh, GPU chips. Um, and then you have uh, uh, Inflection.ai, which is one of 
one that I'm keeping an eye on. It hasn't hit uh, a lot of the buzz that Anthropic and OpenAI has, but keep an eye on Inflection.ai, which is founded by Mustafa Suleiman, who was the founder of uh, Google DeepMind. So mm-hmm. remember what I told you at the beginning, you always follow the rock stars, where the rock stars go. It's like, remember remember back in the day when when Primo, when Premier um, got on a record with somebody, you knew that record was yeah. gonna be hot, right? That's how you want to think about these rock stars in the AI and the Silicon Valley space. Where they go, you follow them because something is happening. So Inflection AI is partnered with Google. So one, you want to look at follow those par- partners. And, and, and what do we know about uh, all of the big brothers in those partners? They all are infrastructure companies, right? And they're all are infrastructure companies. And then Anthropic, OpenAI, and Inflection.ai are all platform companies. So now you're marrying infrastructure and platform. And then you want to think about NVIDIA. NVIDIA is like everybody could, could, could cop, right? Like we, we, we sell into everybody. Now folks are going to go on their own at some point. Um, even OpenAI is really cagey about whether or not they're going to get into the GPU space. And so that goes to your point around the fabs, right? Um, so where, where um, Joe Biden's White House, the administration, um, passed the Chips and Science Act a couple of years ago, maybe a year and a half or so ago, which pumped $62 billion into this space. But that's that's a paltry amount compared to what needs to be done for U.S. to step up and really be a player in chip making. Uh, but it has it's, it's doing its job, which is it's greasing the skids. It's getting the party started. So you're going to see a lot more players jump in from an infrastructure standpoint. And when you have more infrastructure, you're going to have more uh, platform capability as well. So it's right now, the Chips and Science Science Act is feeding the frenzy. Um, okay. uh, the infrastructure entities are feeding the frenzy. And so, you know, we'll sit back and see over the next few months um, who comes out ahead. Uh, who do you think, well, well, tell me what applications do you see in the military and defense space for AI? Because of course we have a geopolitical issue with all the wars. But I think one of the areas that's been most underdeveloped at scale has been our defense. Um, what applications do you see there? And what are your thoughts on China's uh, desire to take over Taiwan and capture uh, TSM? <laughs> All right. So a, cu- a, cu- uh, a couple of things, um, really important things that you mentioned there. So on the defense side, I think where we're struggling right now uh, is on uh, cybersecurity. So remember, we not only have to be on the offensive, we have to be on the defensive as well uh, with respects to attacks, right? And so we're creating, uh, we need to create capabilities on both end, both ends, both to be um, a cybersecurity threat to uh, an adversary, but then protect um, our, um, uh, the home when it comes to cybersecurity. I mean, there is so much space there. Uh, innovation has stymied for a short while. And now with AI, I think there is a lot that can be done and should be done uh, in this space. Um, and so what you'll see in part of the um, the new federal uh, executive order that came out is that there's this hiring strategy that they're implement, implementing um, not only internally, but from abroad as well, opening it up so that we can um, do better in the uh, uh, cybersecurity and cyber threat space. I think that's the best that I can do. Um, what little bit I do know, um, I'm not sure how much I can share, but um, a lot of that stuff is behind um, uh, close spaces. I think uh, uh, now with respect to China, um, um, I, you know, I, I have to say, uh, 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 we're, I'm not thoughtful or smart enough to um, um, comment on that. What I will say is with the Chips and Science Act and with a lot of stuff that America has been doing since the Obama administration and has followed all the way through to now, we are making ourselves less and less independent, uh, less and less dependent on um, Taiwan and TSMC. Okay. Uh, and so, And so I think there's I think as I, the last conversation I had on this 
with someone that I thought was really thoughtful and smart here. When we were three to five years away um, from really feeling comfortable um, that um, everything would collapse if China did uh, invade Taiwan. But if China were to invade Taiwan tomorrow, um, a lot of a lot of tech companies, a lot of uh, companies, period, in the U.S. would be in a world of hurt. Uh, I think we've been slow uh, uh, to move ourselves out of that dependency, but, but the urgency is there, and we're, we're ramping up.